In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the time of flight mass spectrometer, specifically the calculations that involve like the velocity of the ions that are traveling through it. So we're not going to go through the inner workings here, but we are just going to look at the calculations that they can give you with respect to uh, the time of flight mass spectrometer. So a little bit of background information first. So what we've got here are two charged plates, negatively charged plates, okay? And this is our accelerator that's in the mass spectrometer. And we've got these negatively charged plates that draw these positive ions through, okay? So they've been ionized and we're looking to accelerate them forward. Now what happens at this point is these positive ions, like I said, are drawn through these negatively charged plates and accelerated forward, okay? And that's really, really important. So these ions are blasted forwards towards our detector. Now, why is this important? Okay, well, two things. All ions have a one plus charge. So that is a level playing field. So we're assuming all the ions that we've got have a one plus charge because obviously a stronger charge will make them be drawn through with greater force, okay? But they've all got a one plus charge that so they're all drawn through, you know, in the same kinetic energy because of that. And that's really important. This accelerator gives all ions the same kinetic energy. Now that is absolutely crucial, the same kinetic energy. So what we've got here is that they have the same kinetic energy they have the same charge. So the only difference between these ions is their mass. Because of course, what we're looking to do is separate out the different isotopes, each of which has a different mass, okay? So how is it all related? Because we're looking to find out what their velocity is, okay? So how is it all linked? Well, kinetic energy equals half mass times velocity squared. And that's the relationship between all three things, the kinetic energy, the mass, and the velocity. What we can also say is because they've all been given the same kinetic energy, if the mass is high, the velocity is low and vice versa. So because they've been all been given the same kinetic energy, the heavier ones, okay, don't travel as fast. The lighter ones will travel faster, okay? So if they've got a high mass, they've been given uh, some kinetic energy, and you know what? They're thrown forward, but not as fast as the lighter ones, and that's what separates them out. So if at this point here, okay, we've got really heavy isotopes, they're given that kinetic energy, but they'll kind of trundle along at a standard pace, you know, it's a very slow pace. But the lighter ones are blasted forward much quicker, and they're going to get to the detector quicker, which is why it's called the time of flight mass spectrometer, because it depends on the mass, how long it takes them to get to the detector, okay? And it's just like, I don't know, if you had a bowling ball and a football and you push them both forwards with the same force, the football is going to travel faster because it's lighter. Whereas if you push the bowling ball with the same force, it's not going to travel as fast because it's heavier. OK, so that's the relationship between these two things. Sometimes they may ask you to calculate the kinetic energy, OK, using the mass and the velocity. Incidentally, the mass needs to be in kilograms and the velocity is in meters per second. And in that case, you would use this calculation. But a lot of the time, they're gonna ask you to calculate the velocity. So in which case, if we want to find the velocity, velocity equals the square root of two times the kinetic energy over mass. Now, this is really important, okay? You know what? If you're good at rearranging equations, that's fine, but I'm not. So, you know what? Just remember this one because it is a really common question. It can ask you to find the velocity given the kinetic energy and the mass of our isotopes. So, in terms of units, what we've got is velocity is in meters per second. Kinetic energy is just in joules, but our mass, again, is in kilograms. So maybe we've got some conversion to do in terms of our units, but this one, like I said, is the most common type of question you're going to get to find the velocity. So let's take a look at an example. So let's say we're looking at isotopes of copper. So for example, there's two major isotopes of copper, and that's copper 63 and copper 65. Now, these two are, of course, mixed up in our sample. Uh, which one is actually going to get to the detector first? 
Well, it's actually going to be our 63 copper. Why? Because it's the lightest. These ones are going to come in second because they're heavier. They've both been given the same kinetic energy, but the lighter ones travel faster and will have a greater velocity. The heavy ones have a smaller velocity because they're heavier. So let's say we were asked to find um, the velocity of our 63 Cu plus isotope. So if we're given the kinetic energy, and that's 1.269 times 10 to the minus 13 joules, calculate the velocity of the Cu63 plus ion. So there's a few things we need to do here before we actually plug those numbers into our velocity calculation. So first things first, let's not forget our units of relative atomic mass. Our Cu63 plus ion has a relative atomic mass of 63 grams per mole. So if you had one mole of those ions, they would weigh 63 grams. But we're not looking to find the velocity of one mole of Cu plus ions. We're looking to find the velocity of one single Cu plus ion. And we need to get that in kilograms. So how do we find the mass of just one copper ion? We need to divide it by Avogadro's constant, okay? Because that's how many ions are gonna be in one mole. So basically the mass of one 63 Cu plus ion is 63 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So we'll plug that into our calculator here, 63 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and it equals 1.047, let's say for argument's sake, I'll keep this number in the calculator, times 10 to the minus 22 grams. Okay, so that's the mass of one Cu plus ion of, of course, 63 isotope. But that's not what we need. We need it in kilograms, of course, okay? So in kg, basically, we need to divide by a thousand. So that equals, uh, divide by 1000 and as expected that is 1.047 times 10 to the minus 25 kilograms which is a ridiculously small number but we are weighing a single ion in kilograms here okay so we're expecting a really small number here so now we've got the two numbers we need. We've got our kinetic energy in joules given in the question. Just be careful if it's in kilojoules, you need to change that. And of course, our mass of a single ion in kilograms. So what we can do over here, we can write velocity equals the square root of two times our kinetic energy, 1.269 times 10 to the minus 13, all over our mass of a single ion in uh, kilograms. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put that into our calculator. So 2 times 269 times 10 to the minus 13. I'm just going to hit the equals button there. So that's that uh, divided by uh, 1.047 times 10 to the minus 25. That equals that. But of course, we need to square root our answer and that gives us a massive number, which is 1556942 meters per second. Let's not forget that's our units for our velocity. Now that's a massive number, okay? So basically that's um, 1,556 kilometers per second, if you like, okay? But you know what? They travel really fast. So you are expecting a massive number here. So that's how we go ahead and find our velocity of a single isotope. First step, you need to find the mass in kilograms of a single isotope. Remember, this number is in moles or grams per mole. So we need to divide by Avogadro's and then divide by a thousand. Of course, then you're probably going to be given the kinetic energy. Just be aware it needs to be in joules. And of course, you just plug that into your calculator. So you do need to remember these two equations, okay? They're not going to be given in the question, most likely. So please do remember these. Really, really important. Now, the last thing I will say is this. They may, if they're feeling naughty, ask you to find the length of the flight tube or indeed find out how long it would take for a sample to reach the end of the flight tube given the velocity. OK, so in that respect, you use this equation using distance, time and velocity. So distance equals time times velocity. 
velocity equals distance divided by time, and so on and so forth. It's a really handy little triangle to remember. So here, distance is in meters for D, of course, T is time in seconds, and V is velocity in meters per second. And like I said, that's really handy to remember. You know, it's nothing that's, you know, extra from GCSE in terms of, you know, speed, distance, and time. Uh, that's all that is, really, okay? Final word on this, heavy ions, okay, they're all given the same kinetic energy. Heavy ions don't have a great velocity because they're heavier. Lighter ions do have a greater velocity because they're lighter. Our equation that links all these three things together is so, and again, this one's a really useful one to remember as well because they do like asking about finding the velocity. And your example calculation is here with your unit conversions, okay? So you know what? They're not very common, these calculations, but they are worth marks at the end of the day, okay? So make sure you're, you know, you're prepared in to order uh, to answer these questions, all right? So that are the calculations that are involved in our time of flight mass spectrometer with respect to velocity.